So I wanted to kind of break down, I guess, the final iPhone. This is going to be one of the craziest devices, I think, mostly because Apple is kind of signifying that the iPhone 13 is going to be the last of the last. Personally, I love the iPhone 13 lineup. I think every iteration of these iPhones did so much better than the previous generations. Better battery life, better performance, better displays with the Pro models, and just an overall better phone. However, with all the leaks that we've been getting about the iPhone 14s, I'm actually pretty uncertain about the future of these iPhones. And in my opinion, the iPhone 13 kind of signifies a lot of the last options that we'll have on an iPhone. So first of all, this may be one of the last iPhones we'll be able to actually buy. Apple may be switching over to a some sort of subscription model, or what they're going to end up doing is probably focusing a lot more on the subscription model. They'll probably still let us buy our iPhones and everything, but they are going to completely incentivize us to pick that subscription model from them, and somehow they're going to incentivize people to prefer that model, the subscription-based model, over the actual buying model. And this may be one of the last iPhones to actually signify that. Now, another kind of bigger deal than even that thing is actually the last time we probably will see an iPhone have the same chipset for the Pro models and the base models. Now there was actually a slight little difference between the iPhone you know, 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro. We were actually end up getting a little bit of a faster phone with the iPhone 13 Pro. But this was not a major big difference. This was somewhat of a smaller difference. I mean, it was like one core less or something. Very similar to, I think, the iPhone, you know, very similar to, I think, the MacBook M1 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. There was a little difference, but they were pretty much almost the same exact thing. Thing. And with the iPhone 14s, like I mentioned, with the, what it looks like, the iPhone 14 is going to end up keeping that A15 binary chip inside of it, but the iPhone 15, 14 Pro is going to end up getting that Apple A16 chip inside of it. So although Apple doesn't have like a Qualcomm Snapdragon, you know, cheaper chipset like how, you know, Samsung does it or most other manufacturers do it, this is going to be probably Apple's way of signifying bigger differences between the Pro models and the base models. So that's another thing that's going to be kind of one of the last options that we'll have on our iPhone 13, on our iPhone 14s. Now another big thing on top of this is that this is probably going to be the last time we will see a small iPhone. I don't think Apple is going to go ahead and make a mini device, that's what all the leaks are suggesting. And because of that, it kind of again puts the iPhone 13s at a lot at a last portion. I mean, this is crazy because there's so many last things that the iPhone 13 is going to be having. And personally, although I like the mini lineup, it's still pretty crazy to me that the iPhone 13 kind of signifies a lot of the last that we're going to be having on the Apple lineup. So I would love to hear your opinion on this. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything, also love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.